you would have had the good fortune of being a sportsman living in Maine in 1912, it's possible you would have received a three-page flyer which brazenly proclaimed, You cannot expect success hunting deer or moose if your feet are not properly dressed. The Maine hunting shoe, designed by a hunter who has trampled the Maine woods for the last 18 years, we guarantee them to give perfect satisfaction in every way. Bold words, but not really an understatement considering that these boots, which began manufacturing in 1912, have now been manufactured for over a hundred years. Yeah, these are the L.L. Bean boots, the duck boots, uh, the marine hunting boots, whatever you want to call them, they're an absolute icon. And I'm going to be covering the specs as well as considering the legacy of these boots in this video. You're looking at a modern pair of L.L. Bean boots. Uh, these ones have a uh, thermoplastic blend of rubber in the bottom and then of course the, the leather uppers which are a tan full grain leather. Um, it is a finished leather which is waterproof. The laces are uh, waxed and uh, very thick, thicker than on uh, the Red Wing laces that I uh, provided a review for, uh, the uh, 8138s. You've got the famous chain uh, sole on the bottom it's a single piece sole all of this rubber is a single piece sole very thick and sturdy on the inside you can see that the uh, quality of construction is consistent with what you see on the outside the stitching is all the way through um, it's both a triple stitch and a glue as a matter of fact these boots are interesting because even though they've essentially uh, not changed at all since their introduction a hundred years ago, uh, they've been uh, thoroughly modernized as far as the manufacturing process goes, and yet they're still made in Maine. So you're talking about a boot that um, uh, is such an icon stylistically and functionally that um, the technology has been adapted to it and not vice versa. Um, so you can keep your Gore-Tec boots um, and uh, mukluks are really pretty uh, unnecessary most of the time, so you can keep those too. You're talking about um, boots that I think, honestly, most people, uh, you either get it or you don't. Um, I grew up in Minnesota, and so during the winters, um, these uh, shorter boots, these are the 8-inch um, boot. Um, they weren't totally practical because in, in heavy snow, they were a little short. Um, I'm living in Iowa now, and uh, they, they really are pretty useful throughout uh, all of fall and winter, as well as the spring. Um, and uh, that's sort of the, the ultimate um, form meets function aspect of these boots is you can really use them for all kinds of things. Sure, they were marketed as sportsman's boots, um, but they're just really all-around boots. That's why they have the huge following in the uh, preppy uh, circles is because uh, they actually retain a certain level of formality that uh, otherwise utilitarian bo boots just don't have. Um, form is meaning function here. You're talking about uh, top siders or an oyster case or or uh, the 911, you know, something that... that um, in a way, um, utterly meets the intended purpose and uh, did so in such uh, an ideal way that nothing is really needed to be changed. Um, L.L. Bean uh, still has about 350 people um, working to construct these boots. Um, the process is very different and I encourage you looking into it um, on your own. L.L. Bean has some wonderful videos uh, that they've shot. Um, of their uh, factories. I mean, I think the leather is made in one place and then they're assembled in another place. Um, but uh, basically, um, for me, this, this boot represents um, exhausting a genre. Um, T.S. Eliot, if you'll uh, excuse me, um, says that uh, a genre of poetry is exhausted by a master. And uh, as far as um, the innovation that these boots made, Nothing of its kind has really um, uh, been able to do it better. Um, you might have 
um, more technologically advanced boots, um, you know, all the Gore-Tec hiking boots out there. You might have, um, you know, different kinds of rubber, but uh, all of them in a way fall short of this, this uh, icon. And uh, um, the thing is about these boots is that you, might, you won't find about Gore-Tex is, um, who, who do you know who's ever worn out a pair of boots like these? Um, even if you wore with the rubber and, and the heels on these are going to need to get done, uh, you know, sometime in the next decade, um, you can send it back to LL Bean and they'll replace it for 50 bucks. Um, and, uh, the leather is absolutely something that, um, is of a quality that you're going to want to take care of it or at least respect it. And that's going to be something that you're going to bond with. Um, you're talking about old world craftsmanship in the sense that this is an object that you will uh, not have an uh, autonomous relationship with. It will become something significant in your life um, in a way that uh, most uh, contemporary um, aspects of clothing or lifestyle or whatever are uh, designed to be replaced. Um, not so with these boots, not so with, with uh, some of the trad fashions that um, I think garner respect even if you're not um, you know, really into it. Um, these are boots that, in a way, they only make sense after you've used them. You'll see your dad using them. You'll see, you know, Uncle Harry using them or whatever. And you'll just think, okay, they're just these weird boots. Um, but when you finally have a pair and you've had them for a while, you just realize, well, okay, I get it now. Um, so this is uh, the outdoorsman shoe that's kind of an all-arounder and it will not be uh, replaced by anything uh, because it has effectively... Um, uh, mastered the genre. Thanks very much for watching.